This program is made possible by the giving of the God Called Partners of Renner Ministries. Welcome to today's program. My name is Rick Renner and my friend today, we're going to wrap up the teaching that I've been doing about the spiritual weapons that God has given to every believer. Isn't it good news to know that you do not stand naked in front of the enemy? God has covered you from head to toe with everything you need to drive his power out of your life and to reinforce the victory that Jesus won for you by keeping the devil under your feet. Say amen. But I'm surrounded by replicas of ancient weaponry and real ancient weaponry. And yesterday, we talked about the loin belt of truth. Then we talked about the breastplate of righteousness. Then we talked about the shoes of peace. Wasn't that powerful? Yesterday, what we saw about the shoes of peace, how peace is a keeping power that enables us to stay in place and to march forward. And when peace is operative in your life, you are totally protected. It literally is a keeping peace. But today we're going to continue and we're going to look at other pieces of weaponry which God has provided for you. But I'm offering you my series, which is a 10-part series called Dress to Kill. The full title says, you don't have to take it anymore because you're dressed to kill a biblical approach to spiritual warfare and armor. And it comes with a study guide. And we're also offering you my book by the same name, Dress to Kill. Please order Dress to Kill. If you don't have this, this is a book you need in your personal spiritual library. You will refer to it again and again and again, and it has wonderful illustrations so that you can literally see everything that's being described by the Apostle Paul in Ephesians chapter 6. But hey, if you need prayer, please reach out to us. Let us know how to pray for you. We will release our faith and Jesus will go to work for you. But either call us or send us an email and we'll begin to immediately pray. We really are praying people. Stay tuned for a teaching you can trust, a message that will inspire, strengthen, and equip you with vital insights and understanding from the Word of God. Here is Rick. Today we're going to pick up in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 13, where the Apostle Paul wrote, Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. But I want to remind you about that phrase, take unto you the whole armor of God. And in Greek, it is the word ana labete. The word ana is a little prefix, which means do it again, repeat a former action. The word labete is a direct command, which means take this, take it right now. But when you compound the two words together, it means pick it up, take it like you once took it, wear it like you once wore it. And it implies that the great church of Ephesus, which was really born in the power of God, you can read about that. In Acts chapter 19, it seems that over the years they've drifted, they've walked away from the power of God, and the weapons of their warfare have begun to fall off of them. And that explains why they weren't behaving very well when Paul addressed them in the book of Ephesians. They had malice, backbiting, strife. These are not indicative of people walking in victory. They had dropped their weaponry. And now, in Ephesians 6, verse 13, Paul says, Anna Labete, pick it up. Take it unto yourself the way that you once wore it. Wear it again, pick it up, put it back on, which means if you have walked away from the power of God or if you once walked in weaponry better than you're doing today, you can go back and pick it up and start all over again. Say amen. Then in verse 14, he says, Stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth. And yesterday we saw the loin belt was the most important piece of weaponry for a Roman soldier. Most people wouldn't think that. They would think, well, it's just a loin belt, but it protected the loins of a Roman soldier. If he got a good kick in his loins, he would never be able to reproduce. Not only that, a good kick in the loins would get him down where the enemy could really subdue him and kill him. And not only that, the loin belt was so central it held all the other pieces of weaponry together. And we see that the loin belt is called by Paul the word of truth. And here we have the written word of God, which is so important. It is the only piece of weaponry 
that is passed from the invisible realm into the visible realm. It is the only physical piece of spiritual weaponry that we possess, and it is the Bible. That's how important the Bible is. It is the one weapon you can touch, you can hold, you can read with your eyes, and if you're walking in the Word of God, then you will enjoy your sense of righteousness, which is the next weapon that he lists. If you're walking in the Word of God, you will enjoy a sense of peace, a keeping peace in your life. And if you're walking in the Word of God, you'll have the next weapon. And what is the next weapon? Look what the Bible says in verse 16. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Well, how does faith come to us? Well, first of all, we know from Romans chapter 12 and verse 3 that there is a measure of faith given to every single person. But you can grow your faith. We're told in Romans chapter 10, verse 17, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Here again, we see the impact of the written Word or the loin belt in our life. When the Word of God is in your life and you're feeding on the Word of God, it takes that original measure of faith that you received, it fortifies it, it grows it, it strengthens it, more and more and more faith. And in this verse, the Apostle Paul likens faith to the shield of a Roman soldier, above all. Well, when you first read these words, above all, it sounds like that means this is the most important piece of weaponry. That is not what it means at all. We've already seen what is the most important piece of weaponry. It is your Bible. It is the written Word of God, which is the loin belt of truth. Then what does it mean when it says above all? Well, the Greek actually says out front covering all, and it describes the position of a shield. A shield is not to be used behind you. It's not to be used to your side. A shield is out front. One man has translated this covering all, and it describes the position of faith. It's very interesting, the word faith in Greek describes something which I say is like a bullet that's been shot out of a gun. It always propels you forward. Faith is always out front, enabling you to advance. If you are in retreat, you're not in faith. Faith enables you to advance. And it says, above all, taking the shield of faith, which means you have a level of responsibility in this. You've got to take the shield of faith. Now, there were two kinds of shields which were used by ancient soldiers. One was called aspis. The word aspis described a round decorative shield that was usually very ornate and very beautiful, but you would never use it in a battle because it really didn't cover anything. It was just a decorative shield usually used in big ceremonies or parades. But the shield which was carried by a Roman soldier was more like this. In fact, the word shield that is used here is from the Greek word thura. The word thura describes an oblong door just like any door in your house. It really describes the size of the shield. And here's what we find. When a Roman soldier was brought into the infantry, they would measure him from top to bottom and from side to side, and they would form for him a shield perfectly measured to his dimensions. So he's covered from the top to the bottom, from side to side. And this is so important because sometimes people say, well, I just don't have as much faith as that person, or that person has more faith than me. Forget about other people. Just Realize God gave you enough faith to make sure you're covered from head to toe and from side to side. But the shield of a Roman soldier was very much like this. Now, this is a replica, but the very base of it is wood. And on top of the wood, they put seven layers of animal hide or seven layers of leather and then a small bronze exterior along the edge. It was so powerful that they could use it to withstand attack and to advance. But because it was made of leather, it could become brittle over time. And the only way you could keep your shield in workable condition was when you got up every morning, and this is what was done by every Roman soldier in the infantry without fail. When they got up in the morning, they took a vial of oil, they took a rag, and they began to press the oil into their shield. Can you hear how powerful this is? Oil is symbolic of the Holy Spirit. If the Roman soldier 
did not regularly give a fresh application of oil to his shield, his shield as good as it was in the past, eventually it would become dry and parched. It would become brittle. It would begin to break. The only way you could be assured that your shield was in top-notch condition was by waking up every morning and applying a fresh measure of oil to your shield. And in the same way, maybe you had a faith that was very active in the past, but it's been a long time since you had a good dose of the Holy Ghost on your faith, and it seems that recently your faith has been a little brittle. Well, if you want your faith to be active, if you want your shield of faith to be powerful, you've got to continually put a fresh application of the Holy Spirit's anointing on your shield of faith. You've got to have the anointing on your faith. But there's something else. Mm. This shield was very, very necessary to be doused in water. Why? Because the enemy carried something which was called flaming arrows and that's what the next part of verse 16 says. Wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Well, the enemy carried arrows, and all the arrows looked the same. But there was one particular arrow which was hollow. And on the inside of that hollow arrow, they put combustible fluids. And when the arrow was coming in your direction, it just looked like an arrow. You didn't find out it was a flaming arrow until it hit and exploded like a bomb. These were almost like missiles. They would detonate upon impact. And this is the arrowhead, a real one from over 2,000 years ago from one of those flaming arrows. Normally, a Roman soldier would say, well, that's just a regular arrow coming my direction. But when it hit and it exploded, that's when you found out, hey, that was not just a regular attack. That was a missile which was sent in my direction. Well, if the Roman soldier would take his shield and put it under water, then the layers of skin, the layers of leather would begin to soak up all that water and the shield would become much, much heavier. But because it was water saturated, when the flaming arrows would hit the shield, the shield would extinguish those flaming arrows. Well, water represents the Word of God. Here we come back to the loin belt again, or the centrality of the Word of God in our life. We have to douse our faith in the Word of God regularly, putting our faith under the water of the Word, regularly anointing our faith. And if we'll anoint our faith with a fresh application of the Holy Spirit and douse our faith in the Word of God, then our faith will work like a shield that can repel any flaming arrow that's ever sent in our direction. Say amen. That's what the Bible means when it says we have a shield of faith. But wait, it goes on to say in verse 17, and take the helmet of salvation. And notice again, it says, and take. Here again, we see personal responsibility. Take the helmet of salvation. Well, the word helmet, the Greek word parakephale, the word peri means around. The word kephali is the word for the head. It describes some kind of a weapon that completely surrounds the head. Now, why was it important for a Roman soldier to wear a helmet? Well, let's look here on the set with me today. To my side, we have a real Greek helmet. That's authentic. Next to it is another helmet, which is Macedonian. It was worn by the soldiers of Alexander the Great. Next to it is a hoplite helmet, a classic example. Next to it is a helmet which was worn by Roman soldiers in Lower Italy. Next to it is a helmet which was worn by Scythian nomads. But what most people have in their mind when they think of a Roman helmet is a helmet like this replica. And this is a very good replica, which I picked up in Italy. And look at it. It completely covers the head. It covers the sides of the face, covers the front of the face. And notice the back of the helmet has this big piece which protects the back of the neck. Why was this piece required? Because the enemy carried something called a battle axe. And I just happened to have a real, authentic, ancient battle axe with me. And here it is. If the back of your head was not protected, the enemy would come to you. And with this battle axe, he would begin to take your head off of your so shoulders. So the enemy, so the Roman soldier had to wear a helmet to protect his mind 
And notice that here it's called the helmet of salvation. Please understand. My friends, you need to wrap salvation and all it is around your head. Because if you do not, the enemy will begin to whack away at your mind. He'll whack away healing. He'll whack away deliverance. He'll leave you with nothing but heaven. He doesn't mind if you have heaven. But he will hit your brain and begin to... Whack away healing. He'll whack away deliverance. He'll tell you that prosperity is not yours. And that's why Paul says we need to have salvation and all the facets of salvation wrapped around our brains so tightly that the enemy will never be able to take it from us. And this leads us back again to the Word of God. Do you see how central the Word is? You need to understand what the Bible says, the loin belt of truth about your salvation, about your healing, about your redemption, about God's plan to bless bless you. Everything that belongs to you, you need to wrap it around your head because if you do not, the enemy will try to whack it out of your head and take it away from you. But then Paul goes on and mentions the next weapon. Notice what he says, and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Well, it seems like there's a little conflict because we already said the loin belt is the word of truth. Well, that's the written word. But now we come to the spoken word. Here it says, and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. This word, word is the word rhema. Now, here is a replica of a sword which would have been carried by a Roman soldier. And it is a double-edged sword. Just for fun, I brought a real one. This one is about 2,000 years old. It's been laying under the ground, and that's why it looks so bad. Originally, it would have had a probably a bone-carved handle with a little wood. All of that has disappeared over 2,000 years of history. But originally, it looked something more like this. And when we read Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, it says that it is a double-edged sword. And that's what the Word of God is. It is a double-edged sword. But what does that mean, a double-edged sword? And why do we need a double-edged sword? Well, guess what? In Greek, it is the word distomos. And this is really, really unusual. Just check it out. You'll see that I'm telling you the truth. The word D means two. The word stomas is the Greek word for the mouth. Though it is translated double-edged, it really means a two-mouthed sword. And here's what we find. When the Word of God enters into you, it comes out of the mouth of God and it enters into you. But when it comes out of you, now it's come out of a second mouth. It's no longer a single-edged blade, but when it comes out of your mouth, the confession of your faith, the Word of God coming out of your mouth adds a double edge to the blade, which means there's nothing more powerful than a word that God has sown into your heart, which then comes out of your mouth. My friends, it is a double-edged sword. That is the power of the confessed, spoken Word of God. But wait. There's a problem because it seems that one piece of weaponry in this text is missing, and that is the lance. I told you that every soldier in ancient times had seven essential pieces of weaponry. He could have had more, but these were seven seven essential pieces. Well, for you to have the whole armor of God, then you have to also have a lance. And somebody might say, well, it's not here, therefore this is not complete. No, it's here. Look at verse 18, and praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. I call this the lance of intercession. And notice Paul says praying with all kinds of prayer. Well, you have to understand the imagery. On the backside of the soldier was a pouch that was affixed to the loin belt. And in that pouch were different kinds of lances. And the size of the lance depended on the need. That's why it says praying with all kinds of prayer. It's the picture of all kinds of lances. Lances were what you used to hit the enemy from a distance. And if you were able to use your lance effectively, then you might need to never use a sword or a shield because you can hit him at a distance. And that's what prayer is. And sometimes these lances were so enormous that they had to be put together in the same way that a fisherman today will screw together his fishing pole. Some lances were more than 20 feet long. And I've brought today for you a replica of a Roman lance. This really is a pretty good replica. 
that when they knew how to use their lance, they would hurl it at the enemy from a distance and they could do him in so that he would never get near. And the Bible calls this prayer and intercession. I call it the lance of intercession. This is weapon number seven. And my friends, you need to understand prayer. You need to understand every kind of prayer which God has made available to you. It's not one size fits all. There were many kinds of lances in that pouch. And likewise, God has given you all kinds of prayer and supplication. And that is why the verse says, praying always with all prayer. The Greek literally says with all different kinds of prayer. And actually, if you go to our website, I have an entire series on different kinds of prayer that God has made available to you. But what I want you to see is God has outfitted us with everything that we need. He's given us the loin belt of truth to hold it all together and to make sure we are spiritually productive. He has given us a breastplate of righteousness, shoes of peace. He's given us a shield of faith, a helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit, the lance of intercession. And my friends, if we will take these and notice the verses say over and over, take unto you, take unto you, take unto you. You've got to be involved in this. You've got to take it by faith and learn how to use it. You can reinforce Jesus' victory in your life. I'll be back in just a moment, and I want to pray for you. The devil is real, and as long as you seek to live in God's will, obey his word, and drive back the forces of darkness, the devil will do his best to oppose and thwart the plan that God wants to accomplish through you. But God has given you everything you need to victoriously stand against the devil and to thwart his attacks. That's right. God has provided you with a complete set of spiritual armor that will put the devil on the run every time. With that weaponry at your disposal, you are dressed to kill. In the in-depth 10-part series, Dressed to Kill, Rick Renner covers the power needed to sustain you through any battle, the seven weapons God has provided for you to use against the enemy, the way to stand victoriously against the wiles of the devil, the God-given strategy to keep the devil under your feet, and so much more. This powerful, life-changing 10-part series is available in digital or physical formats, starting at just $20. You can also order Rick's companion book on spiritual armor and spiritual warfare called Dress to Kill. This fully illustrated 500-page book will answer your questions about the often misunderstood subject of spiritual warfare. It will teach you how to put on the full armor of God, and the important role each piece of armor plays in defeating the enemy. This powerful classic on spiritual warfare and spiritual armor can be yours for just $22. Don't miss this special offer, this series, Dress to Kill, and Rick's companion book, Dress to Kill. Call the number on your screen now or go to renner.org to order. Call or go online now. Hey friends, this is Rick Renner. You say, Rick, where are you? I'm in the central meeting room of the Tulsa office and we just concluded a wonderful staff meeting here. I wish that you could meet our team who ministers to our partners. That means they minister to you. They are so trained and they are so committed to minister to people who are reaching out to us from across the face of the planet. And when I say people are reaching out to us from across the world, I really mean from across the world because people are looking for teaching that they can trust. And this building is so important because this is where all the activity happens, particularly where we minister to partners and where we produce materials which we send to the ends of the earth. And right now, we want to retire the debt on this building because if we can retire the debt, it's gonna free up finances so we can take the teaching of the Bible further across the face of the earth. Today, I want to invite you to become a part of our giving team. Would you please join us? Help us retire the debt on this building, free up finances, so we can take teaching that people can trust to them wherever they are all over the world. And my friends, if we have to do it by ourselves, it's gonna be hard that if we do it together, we can get this done. So if you're a part of the giving team, thank you. And if not, please pray about becoming a part of our giving team. Well, today we have wrapped up our teaching on spiritual weaponry. I pray that this has been a blessing to you. Would you please write to me and let me know if it's been a blessing to you? I just love it when you write to me and I read all of your comments. 
But I want to remind you that we're offering you the series, which is called Dress to Kill. You don't have to take it anymore because you're dressed to kill a biblical approach to spiritual warfare and armor. And today is the last day we're offering it on the program. And this series comes with a study guide. And we're also offering you my book by the same name, Dress to Kill. You don't have to take it anymore. Don't you like that? Just think about it. You don't have to be a victim. You don't have to take it anymore because God has given you everything you need. You are dressed to kill. And this book will give you a biblical approach to spiritual warfare and armor. It's nearly 400 pages of revelation about the weaponry which God has given to you. And this book is fully illustrated so you can see all of this while you're studying it. Wow, it's going to be such a blessing to you. But you can order all these things by going online right now or by giving us a call. And when you reach out to us, let me remind you that we are people of prayer and we are waiting to pray for you right now. That's a big part of our ministry is to pray for you and whatever is concerning you. So give us a call or send us an email. And when we hear from you, we're going to release our faith. And Jesus really is going to work on your behalf. But Father, thank you so much. You have not left us naked before the enemy. You've covered us from head to toe, from side to side. You've given us everything we need to be people of victory. And we take it by faith. In Jesus' name, amen. I'll see you in the next program. But please remember, Ecclesiastes 8.4, where the word of a king is, there's power. If you've never received Jesus as your Savior and Lord, Now is the time for you to experience a new life Jesus has to give you. Pray this prayer with me right now. Lord, I repent of my sin and receive you as my Savior and Lord. Wash away my sin and make me completely new. I thank you that my sin is removed and Satan no longer has any right to lay claim on me. I faithfully promise that I will serve you as my Lord for the rest of my life. Amen. If you just prayed the prayer of salvation with us, would you please let us know by going to renner.org forward slash salvation? We would love to connect with you. Renner Ministries is proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ through every available media to the uttermost parts of the earth. Discover the many ways you can help us make a difference in lives around the world with the Word of God. We invite you to partner with us in teaching, strengthening, and rescuing lives for the glory of God. Together, we can make a difference that will last throughout eternity. This program was made possible by the giving of the God-called partners of Renner Ministries.